Okay, so continuing on with overrides for Ark and Fox. Um, for the most part, what we're basically going over is what Ark and Fox applies and then their guide on like how to set things up to tailor it to you. Because there are a lot of like browsers out there and even Fire Dragon and Libre Wolf have things that you're going to want to override just because it's not going to fit your preferences. But here, Ark and Fox shows you how to apply those so you could apply it to those web browsers as well. So we have went over the overrides stuff in the last one. So these are common overrides, it sounds like. These few items out of our 110 plus pref changes will solve, oh, there are 110 plus of them, will solve 99% of usability issues, and you only need to do it once. You can always undo things except deleted items, so read the entire page. So these are common overrides that they, I guess, see people do that you can look for and then flip. We disable binary checks, not in safe browsing local lists. If you do not understand the consequence, override this. We delete all cookies and site data on close. There's no need to change any prefs to keep some cookies and logins, just add site exceptions. So it does give you that option. I haven't seen that for Chrome too much or Chromium based ones, but I haven't sifted through the settings too much either. So you can go to permissions, cookies, allow when on the website or you can settings, privacy and settings, cookies and site data manage exceptions for cross-domain logins, add exceptions for both sites. So like when I was trying to go in through, for school, for going from Canvas to test out, I would need to add an, an override into like Fire Dragon to allow this one and this one to have exceptions for cross-site stuff. So I would do like whatever the URL is for Canvas and then whatever the URL is for test out when I wanted to log into the two so that the token from Canvas could be taken to test out and log me in that way easily without me having to log in manually. Be selective with what cookies you keep as they also disable partitioning. So it would, yeah, it basically breaks down the walls between the sites. We disable Session Restore. If you rely on Session Restore, see our override recipe. So that might be somewhere later on in here. So there's that. We disable Automatic Search from the Unibar. Also see you can use search buttons and keyword shortcuts override if you use and trust a privacy respecting search engine. So you can override it and add in whichever privacy respecting search engine you want to show up in the URL bar. We disable a search and form. We disable search and form history. Form data can be easily stolen by third parties, which is like somewhat scary. So there's that. If you really want to disable that, then that's fine. But there are probably other way, better ways to do autofill than, yeah, that way. We enforce strict pinning override if you have issues with antivirus. We hardened cross origin refers. This may cause breakage where third party images and videos may not load. And with authentication on sites such as banks. If 1601 is strict, too strict for you, override it to default zero and consider using smart refer extension in strict mode. So they even give you recommendations on how to like work around it. We disable the ERM, override if you use Netflix, Hulu, Disney Plus, Amazon Prime, etc. Consider watching those in a secondary browser, which would probably be good to sandbox it somewhere else. Note Mac and Linux users, RFPs, HTTP header spoofing can break streaming sites. We delete history, download form, and browsing histories on close. So you would do 2811 and 2820 for manual sanitizing. And then they disable WebGL, because probably for fingerprinting stuff. Because WebGL needs, like, oops, window size and everything, that stuff, to render things. We enable RFP, the other number one issue, and 4504, letterboxing. Letterboxing is independent of 4501, and it's the preference that creates borders around your web pages. 
Read the next wiki page to decide if you want to keep using them or perhaps use Canvas Blocker instead. Other preferences may cause site breakage, but nothing that can't be fixed. You won't lose anything. It's not the end of the world. So they've got override recipes and then check already answered issues while not 100% definitive. Search for setup in the user.js example. Setup web can cause some websites to break. Setup Chrome changes how Firefox itself behaves. So it's not website di relate directly related, but it's Firefox itself. You may also want to add items in the 5,000s or 9,000s. So these are the optional ones, and then these are the personal ones. So RFP or not to RFP. Best any browser can confidently do, excluding Tor Browser, is full naive scripts. And Firefox, the best tool for that is RFP. It is performant, does not leak real values, and has timing mitigations against side channel attacks. If you can handle a few RFP side effects, cool. If not, then consider using Canvas blo Blocker if your threat model fits. So again, this goes back to what's your threat model, your use case, and this is your best way to analyze it. So you've got a couple other options. If you need something to sanitize things after every session, Arkenfox does that by default. If you don't want to install a user JS and you're only using it for certain things, then you might consider LibreWolf, which is where kind of this idea for the video came from. This is a very simple generalized and short summary about non-Tor browser browsers that assume worst case scenarios, ultimate outcomes, and real solutions. I am not interested in debating issues with non-experts. One of the major difficulties Thorne experienced in a relationship with the Peacock was learning to distinguish between him pretending to be stupid and just to get off their guard. Pretending to be stupid because he couldn't be bothered to think and wanted someone else to do it for him. Or pretending to be outrageously stupid to hide the fact that he actually didn't understand what was going on. And really being genuinely stupid. So... So you kind of assume the worst because out of all these, it's just whatever makes sense. And a lot of browsers do that. They kind of like assume the worst, like LibreWolf will sanitize everything and kind of not give you the option to alter a lot of the settings. Tor Browser. If your threat model calls for anonymity and advanced fingerprinting protection, then use Tor Browser. Again, we're back to that thing again. If you do nothing on desktops, you are already uniquely identifiable. Screen, window, and font metrics alone are probably enough. Add time zone, name, preferred languages, and several dozen other metrics, and it's game over. Here's a link to the results of a study done in 2016 showing 99.24% unique hit rate, and that is excluding IP addresses. Changing a few press from default is not going to make you more unique. There's no such thing. Here are some fingerprint protection basics. Protect the real value of each metric. It does not matter how it does it. Naive script that swallows a randomized value is a naive script. The more randomized metrics, the greater the chance a script becomes naive. Fooling naive scripts does not require a crowd. So this is basically the idea of a lot of websites already like look for your resolution, all these like different settings in your browser because your computer's going to be different. And so you're already going to be fingerprinted as it is, as a unique ID in the least. So it's going to read your web stuff and everything. So like Fire Dragon, for example, set your user agent to Windows and things like that. So when you go to a website, it always pulls up a download link for like a program for the Windows version. Advanced, all randomizing is detectable. This is a fact. A script that does this is an advanced script. Advanced scripts are not all the same, i.e. they all have levels of sophistication. Defeating, defeating advanced scripts require a crowd. The larger, the better. So the larger the crowd of random values that you're giving that advanced script, the better it's going to be to blend in because everybody's giving it randomized data. Rule 2, cover enough metrics. Optionally randomized to cache naive, catch naive scripts. Ultimately enough that it becomes too hard or costly or impossible because all randomizing can be detected. So they can detect it, but it becomes too costly to sort through. 
Only Tor browser can confidently advance address advanced scripts enough metrics covered in a large crowd the best any other browser can confidently do is fool naive scripts if you're not convinced add the loose data points from your ip vpn so yeah like ip vpn those kind of like give you a way to be tracked Arkan Fox does not and never has claimed to defeat advanced fingerprinting and does not care if two or three press with world to world tangible benefits change any stable metrics because you are already unique. See the preceding section. Ark and Fox's primary objective have always been security, privacy, and mitigating the very real, real and substantial forms of tracking such as state and navigational. Rather than pri prioritizing the potential threat of a widespread advanced fingerprinting script. So there are going to be very few places that have like that advanced fingerprinting, but at the same, there are going to be many places that are going to have the naive version because that's what's cheaper and takes like less work to do. It's going to take less resources to sort through it and deal with that. Whereas the advanced ones, you're talking like high dollar pro companies, more than likely your big tech that is going to be doing that. So you're, one of your other options is to use browser sandboxing, in essence, by using different browsers. That said, Arkenfox does not resist stateless tracking. Do not listen to random non-experts with no knowledge of conditional entropy or sur surprisals. It enables ETP's fingerprinters and recommends uBlock Origin, which I recommend as well. It enables RFP. RFP is a robust performant built-in browser solution. It does not leak. RFP randomizes Canvas to catch naive scripts. Most scripts are naive with Canvas. RFP doesn't require crowd or care about Tor browser to fool naive scripts. RFP contains timing mitigations as bonus against many side channel attacks. RFP can't make fingerprinting worse. You are already unique if you do nothing. Again, IP addresses, locations, they can kind of get your location based on the IP address. The best way you're going to do that is by either having an ISP that is located elsewhere somehow that like sets your location to like somewhere out of state at least or by having a VPN. So if a fingerprinting script should run, it would need to be universal or widespread. I.e. it uses the exact same Canvas audio and WebGL tests among others. Most aren't shared by a data broker. Most aren't not be naive, most are, and not be just first party or used solely for bot detection and fraud prevention, most probably are. So this is the idea that we all have different setups, and web scripts are very, very, like, a lot of web scripts will go for, like, a canvas size, resolution size, and all these different things, because somebody that has three different monitors and those different monitors range in size will have a different canvas size and all those other settings in their, for their browser automatically than say someone that just has one monitor and 1080p and that kind of thing. RFP, due to its nature, which is effectively breaking web standards while it's protecting 100 plus metrics, RFP does cause the odd issue breakage canvas you can set a side exception either temporarily or permanently. Note, totally randomizing canvas per execution is by design. So you can go, let's see, results, get image data to data URL to blob. A trained user can spot an RFP canvas by its wavy pattern. So like probably like the sine wave or cosine wave. Set revoke site exceptions by the URL bar or control I permissions. So like that'll be up here somewhere. It'll show so like you've got the protection thing, the uh, site security thing that'll show you all this cool stuff. And then it'll have the canvas thing right next to it. Edge cases caused by example HTTP header, timing mitigations, device pixel ratio and alt key spoofing. Usability time zone is always UTC zero, which is pretty standard, which is really cool. Prefers color scheme is always light because you hate yourself. If you can live with that and you should have a secondary browser for the occasional site glitch, 
then use RFP as the best solution possible. Otherwise, if you think the threat fits your wheelhouse, use Canvas Blocker with Canvas and audio randomizing. The rest is not really needed and will add performance costs. Note that extensions lack APIs to fully protect metrics, but naive scripts are likely not that sophisticated. Let's see. Yeah. So, again, naive scripts, extensions. Um, some extensions will do better than others, but your, like they said, your mileage will vary on this. So once you are done doing your overrides and choosing your things and what you want or not, then you can go into apply and update. But I think we will cover that later because we're already at like 15 minutes. So hopefully we'll get through the rest of it in a timely manner. But there are a lot of other like pref recommendations that they have. If you enjoyed the video, then like, comment, subscribe, feed the algorithm, boost the video up, share this video with your friends. If you found it informative or you just want to chat, I've got... Plenty of places in the description, Discord, Gilded, and what have you. Check those out, and I will see you guys in the next one.